Uh, let's do our weekly segment here, Tyler. Last week we started, uh, you know, a little thing we did, and I believe we've come up with a name for it, Tyler. I like the idea of Jedi options here because you love Star Wars. You are the options Jedi, and we're going to go and you're going to use the Force to compel us to understand these option strategies, correct, uh, and identify them. You're going to use your wizardry and uh, bring it in here. Uh, Tyler has one stock, okay, and he's got two different ways to play it in the options market. And so, Tyler, you're up. Uh, show us what you got. And then Matt and I have the fun job of uh, judging you, which is always right. enjoyable. Yep. Today, so today's fit comes from the consumer staples sector. I love this sector. We, we liked this sector coming into this week because of the little breakout pattern. Uh, I also like it because when the rest of the market got a little dicey in the last couple of days, staples held up quite well. So... Um, from a diversification perspective, this isn't adding another tech stock on top of all your other tech stock plays. Um, it's, it's a staple stock and, and, and it's relatively stable and it's, it's got a really good technical pattern. So um, Walmart is my pick for today. And from a technical perspective, a couple of things I really like. Number one, um, I like how well this thing's come back over the past uh, six weeks. If you were listening to us six weeks ago, one of the things we talked about was the dip in Walmart, the dip in Costco, and how every dip has been eventually a buying opportunity. Nice that you didn't have to wait that long on Walmart coming back, but I, I really like this high base pattern over the last couple of weeks, right at the, the gap, the down gap from earnings. And one of the things that I've noticed again and again and again is when you have a gap area like this, they tend to fill. Uh, it's an area that doesn't have much by way of resistance. And so I feel like now that we've taken out the gap area, path of least resistance is higher. It doesn't have to be. It can do whatever it wants. But this is the type of pattern that I like to trade. So I like Walmart uh, for a mildly bullish trade. Uh, so I'm going to present with you two different ideas. And then you can tell me which one you like best. Um, for a staple stock, they're kind of boring. And so I like how you can layer in options to enhance the potential return to make it a little bit more interesting trade. Obviously, you could buy Walmart outright and do a little swing trade, uh, but I'd like to increase my odds and, and potential payout by, by using options. Um, they are quite cheap. When you take a look at the implied volatility, um, the rank is relatively low. This is probably just a little uh, aberration here, but the IV rank is low. So options are cheap, which means I'm not going to get paid much with a bull put. Uh, so I I'm looking to buy options in some fashion. I'm going to do a call spread. And that kind of leads me to, to one of two ideas. Either I do something a little more directional, like a bull call vertical, or I do something a little bit more cash flow, like uh, using like a poor boys covered call, also known as a bull call diagonal spread. And so I'll start with the less directional of the two. Uh, and that is the poor boys covered call. There's a lot of variation with these in terms of how you can build them. So you might have two different traders with the same idea, use different strikes in months. That's fine. But conceptually, we're buying a longer term in the money call and we're going to sell a short term out of the money call against it. Um, and so for me, I like to, and, and, and actually now as I'm, I'm talking through this, I think I did something similar in the last segment last week. Uh, so the repetition hopefully will, will help this sink in. But what I like to do to, to really amp up the ROI is to buy a two month option and sell a one month against it. We're going to stick with the monthlies because we've got better liquidity than the weekly. So I'm going to go to June. I'm going to buy an in the money call option. Essentially, this is going to be my substitute for buying stock. So if you're thinking about a poor boys covered call instead of buying stock, I'm going to buy an in the money call option that behaves like the stock would. And when you look at the pricing here, I can pay five bucks to get a 55 delta. I can pay eight bucks to get a 72 delta. I can pay 12 bucks to get an 85 delta. I don't want to pay 12 bucks. I'll tell you that too expensive. So that brings it down to either buying the 135 strike or the 140 strike from a cost perspective. If I can make it work with a 55 Delta, I will, because the cost is going to be lower and the ROI is going to be higher. This above pretty much any other trade, you really got to use a risk graph to, to nail down the, the right profit zone. So I'm going to try, I'm going to buy the June 140 call mm -hmm. and I'm going to sell the May 145. 
145, it's a 35 Delta. You're gonna get about two bucks. I would be okay if somebody wanted to sell the 146 or the 147 or even the 144. But when I look at the chart, I feel like 145 is a pretty realistic target for where this can go. So I'll I'm cut start. in on that as well. One other thing that grabbed my attention, that volume right there on the 145, uh, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. those five strike price numbers tend to get a little bit more action. So you've got to, li- and they're all liquid, don't get me wrong. But uh, if there ever was like a like tiebreaker or something, the fact that volume and open interest is so substantially higher would uh, grab my attention. Fair point. Yep. For sure. For sure. So, so I sell the 145 against the 140. It's going to cost me three bucks. And, and the risk graph is really what tells the tale here. Uh, this is what the graph looks like, okay? Relatively similar to what a cover call looks like. I'm paying $300. If this gets up and sits right at 145, I can make 300. That's a 100% return, which is fantastic. If it goes higher, that's fine. You know, I've still got like a 150 to $200 profit if it really takes off. So the ROI is very, very high. And we're talking about Walmart here. This is not Netflix, right? It's not a momentum stock. And yet I'm able to use the leverage and options to generate a nice potential return. The other thing I like is my break even is below the current price. And so your, your break even's at 140. As long as Walmart ends above 140 in a month, I'll have some kind of profit. That gives me the positive theta component. So if this goes sideways, I'm still going to generate uh, a little bit of profit. That's the first rate idea. Stay here for one second. Uh, open up those price slices for me if you can. I just want to check the math on a couple of different things. Uh, sure. So the net theta here, we've got a $300 cost. Your net theta is $1.53 a day right now, right? Uh, mm-hmm. <clears throat> that will increase over time as uh, that theta, those theta numbers change as time passes. We've got a 30-day option. We've got a 60-day option. Now that's mm-hmm. on a net cost of 300 bucks. Now if I flip, unlock that net cost for one second, if you can, just come down here where that lock is. And you don't have to go back in the option chain. Just flip it from May to, or from June to say the next one, July. So cost goes up about 70 cents, it looks like, 80 cents, mm-hmm. something like that. And my theta would only increase by about uh, 0.75 at current print. So these are usually, this is where <clears throat> in this type of strategy, you start with your base rules and we'll go to the playbook here and I'll at least uh, explain what the playbook is. So people who out there who've never studied these option strategies, uh, if you're not yet a pro member of tackle trading, you can go through some video tutorials and rule guidelines on how to play a diagonal bull call spread, which is what this is, Tyler. Uh, but uh, I actually like the June, May composition. I just wanted to look at that real quick to see how much more in cost I had to pay if I went out to get July. Uh, but uh, okay, Matt, any thoughts on this spread before Tyler shows us the second one? No, uh, uh, diagonal spread on Walmart here makes a lot of sense, even more so than a horizontal spread or even a covered call, quite frankly. Uh, so I do like the diagonal spread here. And a lot of times when uh, a company like Walmart, a staple company, very boring company like Walmart, gets into that implied volatility range of 18, 19, 22, mm-hmm. 23, it's just so stinking tough to do things like covered calls and and to get a a decent enough return on a covered call to justify the the capital allocation. And so adjusting that to a spread, i.e. a horizontal or a diagonal spread makes a lot of sense. And so, yeah, if it would be a conservative way to play the breakout, I do think there are more aggressive ways you can play the breakout on Walmart. uh, If you want to take it directional, but if you're looking for a conservative option strategy, bring in a little cash flow, take some directional component, uh, take it, take some directional risk. This makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I agree. Uh, what <clears throat> What's the one we're going to compare it to, Tyler? Yeah, so the comparison is going to be just a vertical spread where I'm buying uh, and selling in the same month, right? So you're going to have a little less time decay. It's going to be more of a delta play. Um, and, and I don't think we need to really overthink this one. Primarily, I would go out to probably June to give myself a little bit more time, makes it more of a position trade. I'd buy the first strike in the money, which is the 140 strike. And then I would just sell the higher strike, the 145, mm. right? Mm. Um, and so I'm paying around two bucks. I can make three, which makes it more of a 150% potential return. Um, and my theta is slightly negative, um, but it's, it's cheaper cost. Verticals are almost always cheaper cost than diagonals. 
So um, the appeal here is I get a cheaper cost at 200 bucks instead of 300. Still looking for the stock to go above 145. If it does, I'm, I'm looking close to a 150% return. So I get a higher ROI in exchange for taking a little bit more of a directional bet. Okay, and uh, go back to the option chain on this one. The only, the only question I have for you here, 140, 145 is fine. It's $5 spread on Walmart. Walmart's not a fast mover, but when you don't have that big a Delta difference, it ends up, uh, it's gonna take a little bit more time in many ways to, to develop, right? 55 minus 37 gives me a net 18 Delta. Uh, the only question I have, Tyler, why not the 140, 150 here? Open it up a little bit. If we're going to play it directional, I kind of want the potential reward of that. Uh, it won't mitigate my theta as much. I might actually, I'll probably carry more negative theta in that regard, but I'm still balancing it away from just a long call option. Uh, why the five spread and not a 10 here? Because that's that would be the only debate I would have on the vertical side of it. Yeah, I don't have a problem with the 10. I don't have a problem with the 10. I, I think it's just... Me knowing it's it's Walmart going for a bigger directional play, um, I'm, you know, that's more of like a I don't know plus three type bias. I'm just defaulting to being a little bit more conservative. Is all um, you don't I think you do like can it, get to one fifty? It, you a, think you can get to one forty five? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yep. One fifty is a real big move for Walmart. Yep, it would be. But so, I do like that 140, 150 better than just straight buying calls. I mean, you do at least reduce the cost by a good 30% or so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which one do you like, T? Oh, I like the vertical. You like the vertical? I do. I, I mean, I completely would understand why. So, And I love bull call diagonal spreads. Don't get oh, me yeah. wrong. I love that strategy. I think it's a wonderful strategy for people to learn. If you've only, if you're at the type of your, your, your progression as a trader, where you've learned how to do a long call and you've learned how to do a vertical, which is usually the second strategy somebody's going to learn in that progression. Maybe you know how to do your covered call system, but you never got into the time spreads. I think diagonals are a wonderful strategy that everybody should at least put some time into learning and understanding to put it into your toolbox if and when it's appropriate to use it. Low IV to get positive theta and a positive delta on a stock I feel very confident in. Yeah, I can see the diagonal. I have no problem with the diagonal. Um, I just think the verticals in play. I like staples enough right now to where, to me, the directional, I want the Delta really. I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'm, <clears throat> maybe I'm getting greedy on this one. I want that Delta. I want to have the upside so that if Walmart does trend as staples recover and continue to push into new highs, that maybe I can catch that 150 run. So what about you, Matt? Uh, which one are you leaning? I think there's a lot of ways to play Walmart right now from very conservative to, to a little bit more aggressive. I mean, you're never going to get to the point where you're like, I'm going to go YOLO and buy out of the money call options on Walmart. That's just not the, who the stock is. Um, I, for me, I, I, I'm going to keep it simple. I do like I do like Delta here. Like I just do. I, I, I like directional risk here because I do think, you know, you get into 145, you want to take advantage of that. Um, but, but I'd also, you know, I'm going to come off it a little bit and I, uh, Tyler, what do you think about, I know we're doing a little more deep dive in just options here and, you know, geeking out on options. What do you think about just buying a call option on Walmart? I, I don't, I don't mind buying a call option. Um, I would go a little bit longer term. Yeah. yeah, yeah I think that's what the, I asked. the thing for me is if I'm going to buy the 140 yeah. June 140 call, I feel like I'm willing to cap the gain at 150 in exchange for cutting my risk by 30%. So if, if it's hard for me not to, to do a $10 spread over a long call. So if, if it was just, Hey, let's take advantage of the directional, you're not going to get above 150 anyways. So you might as right. well sell it. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm with you there. And I feel like the ROI is high enough Yeah. to where you're, you're not going to be bad. Okay. You know, I, I mean, you're, you're, you're not going to be mad if it runs too much because I have so much upside. Because I personally would rather take a little bit more of a delta position here, I do like the spread. Whether, that, whether you're talking the five point or the 10 point, depending on how you want to approach it, I'm fine with either one. I do like the vertical spread here, but that diagonal one is a really good way to go about it as well. I love it, Tyler. 
I love this segment. My I, I love this segment. Yeah, the Jedi Jedi options. Uh, I can't I can't wait till Tyler brings us an eight legged spread though. Tyler, are you truly Jedi or are you a Sith Lord? Uh, he's Jedi, bro. Of course, he's Jedi. What are we talking? Like, he's how pure. is I've that? Never had a Sith, a... I've never had a Sith thought in my life. Tim. In fact, <laughs> how, how dare you? <laughs> you offended his metachlorians just by uh, asking if he was had Sith blood. Like, no. <laughs> Tyler looks at Obi Wan and he's like, "That is my hero." Did you watch? I, I'm sure you you love Star Wars. You watched uh, the new series uh, that's out on Disney of Plus. Course. Yeah, Mandalorian. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is the way, my friend. This is the way. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, I had one question in the chat. We'll kind of wrap up here on, and I think they were just chattering. Uh, Swin and Jable. A lot of the regulars uh, are looking at Microsoft right now. They're asking for a read on Microsoft. Let's give a quick one. Then we'll wrap up the show here. Uh, Tyler, uh, give me a read on this company. The issue you're going to run into with every large cap tech stock right now is earnings, right? And, and so fundamentally, you just have to ask yourself, am I willing to do something in earnings or not? And if the answer is no, it's a moot point, right? Um, it's basing at its high. It's constructive. Yes, it could be a breakout over 261.50, but I wouldn't buy a breakout over 261.50 a day before earnings. And so I guess what you're hoping is that it continues to base and then maybe the earnings is the catalyst and gives you a breakout without a big gap so you don't miss it. Um, to, to me, I think this is a post earnings trade, you know, you queue up a trade, but, but it's all about how does it react to earnings that drives how I want to trade it. Yeah. And with a Microsoft for me personally, the way I approach these types of companies, if they are longer term investments, not short term trade uh, setups, uh, you know, I usually I'm not going to hedge this wall uh, Microsoft, you know, the market maker move expectation next week. What is Microsoft gap? What, two, three, four percent at the most? Not uh, a lot. You know, it does. It's not a big gapper. It just really yeah. isn't. It's pretty well behaved. So we'll take a look at it. We'll break it down a little bit later, but I think Tyler's right. You got earnings coming up next week. That will be the convo on so many of those companies. Guys, that's our show here for today. Uh, let's get final thoughts from the team. Uh, Tyler, you first, you're our guest. Uh, final thoughts. Uh, I, I, I just, you know, I'm happy the market's bouncing back. Small caps are now up 2%. Sometimes by the time we're done talking, what we said at the beginning is, is not as re relevant. Um, I'm happy to see the market follow through here and um, confidence in bulls restored, I guess. So um, look, I made money today. I'm happier than I was yesterday. I mean, not that my attitude is impacted by what the market does on a daily basis because <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so Jedi, okay? <laughs> but I mean, if it did, uh, I'm definitely happier today than I was yesterday. 